Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Kaz, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a quick cinematic logo animation in Blender, like this one. Alright, so just to let you guys know, the uh, project file will be on my Patreon, so link in bio. Um, but that being said, let's jump right into the video. Alright, so... Uh, here in Blender, uh, I already got rid of my defaults. We're going to go ahead really quick and you could either, uh, bring in a logo through an SVG, um, or you could even type in any type of lettering here and, uh, add any font and whatever you want to do to that. Right. In my case, I'm going to bring in, uh, a logo an SVG. So, uh, SVG import SVG and, uh, look for your logo. In this case, I'm going to scroll down a bit. And so I have a couple logos here. This is the one that I use for the, this is the one that I use for the preview. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this just right there for now. So really quick, what we're going to do is we're going to set origin to geometry. And uh, what that's going to do is it's going to allow the uh, logo or each individual shape to rotate, rotate on the, uh, on the center. So uh, really quick, we're going to also go ahead and make this a bit bigger and uh, move it on the x-axis make sure it's centered uh and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select all these uh shapes right here Control j and uh unite them so now it's just one one shape by itself later on we're gonna go ahead and separate them but in the meantime we're gonna do it this way all right really quick i'm also gonna take a quick break and let you guys know that i'm gonna be announcing something pretty cool on my uh instagram so make sure you head over to my instagram cosmico r cosmico r um follow me and uh stay tuned all right so again back to the video uh we have now all these individual shapes which again if you have a logo or whatever the case might be uh you'll have uh to unite them all this all the different shapes again the less shapes you have i think the better it is the easier it is to animate but another quick thing you want to do is just do keep in mind that animation that i did of course i did i i thought about it and I found ways. So based on whatever logo you might have, you wanna, you might wanna think of different ways that it could be animated and look cool. So in this case, I'm gonna be showing you right now, right? This is, I'm gonna show you the animation part right now, but let's just set it up. So really quickly, we're gonna go to our object data property, go to geometry, extrude it a bit. I don't want it to be too thick, so maybe a little less. Somewhere around there should be pretty cool. The only reason why I, I joined all the different shapes was because if not, I was going to have to adjust this for each one individually. So I'd rather just unite them, do that. And then later on, I just separate them, which I'll show you how to do that as well. It's a cool thing to do, to know how to do for future projects. So, all right, once you have this, um, you want to also bring up the depth on the bevel a bit, 0 0.001. Uh, this is literally just enough to get the nice little um, edges around your objects to look a bit more shiny. So that way, when you do add... Um, when you do add any type of roughness material, like low roughness, shiny material, you'll have those nice little shine on the edge that would look cool. Especially for this, we're going to need it since we want to use a nice little chrome material. Whether you use gold or whatever the case might be, you'll have that nice edge around your object. And I think it's pretty cool. So do keep that in mind. All right. So once we have this, we could go ahead and convert this into a mesh. And now to separate this, what you want to do is literally just go to tab to and to go into edit mode. Uh, go to three to face select and we want to go ahead and select our shape like so so now that's one that's one of my shapes so p and then separate by selection and now that's separate and then do the same thing for the o so make sure we select the whole thing by clicking on l p selection and then i'm gonna go ahead and spit this up but i'm literally gonna do the same thing for all the different letters All right, so now that all my letters are separate, as you can see there, they all will move on on the on that x axis right there, on that on that point right there. So we don't want that. So to do to get rid of that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select them all again, and then set origin to geometry. And so now they're all gonna have their uh, their own origin point, as you can see in the center. All right. So now that we have this, what we're gonna do is we want to go ahead and create a curve using this outline so to do that what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead shift a add a quick uh, bezier curve and so 
the only reason why i want to do this with a curve is because just like on that preview that i showed you guys when i have this turned into an outline like this i want to be able to go here and animate it like so as you can see it'll start and end like so so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we replicate this outline with this curve and the only reason why i don't use it with this curve is because for some reason it won't allow me to do it with that if you guys know how to fix that let me know down below but i'm pretty sure there is no way to work around that other than just creating your own bezier curve another thing that i've noticed that you can't do is if you have these filled in like so so they they pretty much close there there's no like end or beginning i mean yeah like start or, or ending uh if you try to animate it as well it won't work so but i found a way to to you know make it work and so here it is so we're gonna go really quick and go into top view click on number seven on the numpad by the way really quickly let me know if you guys like this type of videos where it's like how to create a specific project and it's a very long video so these videos are usually taking me about like 20 to 30 minutes to get them done um so they're about that long let me know if you guys rather rather have those step-by-step -step tutorials or if you guys want just quick overview of like very specific projects but anyways we're gonna make this small uh we're gonna bring this somewhere around here go into edit mode and so now we're gonna go ahead and place this point i want to start somewhere up here so place this point right here and then place this point right here so this is almost like using the pen tool but instead it's just a curve that you gotta go ahead and edit so by the way when i click on these points you could either g to grab them and move them or rotate and it'll rotate the point so i'd say somewhere around here should be cool and then this one uh we want to move it somewhere around here and then this has to be more in like so okay so you have that there now now here, as you can see, we have all these weird edges. I don't want to do that. I want it to just go fully straight to down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our point and then E to extrude. And then it's going to make me another point. And this point, I want it to add some somewhere around here. And now we're going to rotate it. So it's pretty much just straight right there. And this point right here also has to be straight. But as you can see, when I move it, it's also affecting this anchor right here. So to get rid of that, what you would do is you would select your point you will click V on your keyboard and then set to free. So that's the handle type, it's free now. So basically if you move this now, that other point will still remain on its position. So this is a free handle now. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this point and E to extrude and move it somewhere here. And then for this one, we wanna go ahead and move this somewhere up here and then this somewhere down here. And again, it's still having the same, we're still having the same problem where we move this one and it's affecting this other point, this other anchor. So to get rid of that again, click on your point, V, free, and uh, now we'll be able to move this one point right here. And the other one is gonna remain it on its position. So I'd say somewhere around there should be pretty cool. I think that works. And then select this one again, move it up. Let's move this back a bit more. Boom, right there, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and select this one. And uh, we're gonna need that to be set into free. So we're gonna eat once you select that once you select this one point and make it free and you now extrude it all the points are gonna be now free as you can see they move on its own individual shape okay so just keep that in mind so if you need it to be aligned again all you got to do is select your point select your point and uh, set it to automatic and now again it'll be automatic it'll move okay so keep that in mind that's something to, to know uh so let's go ahead and move this right here and then this one point right here this one point right here we're gonna move it up a bit and so literally i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this for the whole outline so i'm gonna speed this process up so so it makes the video a bit shorter but you get the point just go do that and i'll see you guys on the other side All right, so right here we're pretty much we're we're pretty much almost done with the uh, with the outline. So what we're gonna do again? Don't don't do this. Don't don't fill them up because we're not gonna be able to animate the uh, the this these uh, per, 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 you're not gonna be able to adjust these uh, numbers over here, the beginning and the start, like right here. You're not gonna be able to do that if you join them. So move this all the way back again. Okay, 
so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one point we're gonna bring it right there so it pretty much connects but it's not really connected and then we're gonna bring this we're gonna bring it bring this back like so and then this one right here this one point should be somewhere around there and then we'll just pretty much just so we have our outline outline so now if we go back into object mode and while having this selected we move it up as you can see it's animated and we can now go ahead and make that thicker if you want we could even add some extrusion to it so that it goes it goes more back or whatever the case might be but again it's just going to be animated which i think is pretty cool and as you can see another thing that you want to keep in mind right here it's open if you want to close them just fill gaps and it'll be closed and now we can get rid of this one point all right so now that we finally have our logo um prepared for to be animated we're gonna go ahead and select the whole thing rx90 and uh we again we, you want to make sure that it's actually centered and again just because i've already pre-planned this animation i did it already and i'm this is my second time doing it um i came to realize that i want my logo to be animated first with the cos and I want it to somehow come together. The COS comes together first. And then the M and the E pops from the back and kind of just locks in. But I'm going to have two cameras. This is where we're actually going to do some cool stuff. So we're going to add two cameras to our timeline. One that's going to be more like showing you like the side of the logo. And like moving a bit. Having this like come together. And another one that's going to be zoomed in. And it's going to kind of move back. So to do that really quick, let's let's set up those cameras really quick, right? So we're going to shift A. We're going to add a quick camera. Boom. Uh, we're going to make sure we are on the front view. Uh, we're right here. Control Alt Zero to lock in that camera on the front, right? And to open up this menu right here, go to view, camera to view. That way you can hold shift and your middle mouse button. If you click on it and holding shift, you're able to pan around with the camera. So somewhere right there should be the center. Move back a bit. Okay. Now do keep in mind that the first thing that I'm going to have pop up will be my logo right here. So this is the first thing that has to be centered. So if I go ahead and lock this in, if I hide this, my logo should be the one thing to be centered on my screen. So I'm going to move this on the X axis a bit somewhere around there. Okay. And if you turn off your overlays, just make sure that it's centered. Now, really quickly, we're going to go into the render viewport or render view, uh, the render view and then move to cycles add a gpu compute selected and then really quickly i'm gonna add a quick little hdri which if you want access to this hdri it'll also be on my patreon with the project file as well so do keep in mind my patreon with the project file will be on my description on the description down below so really quick go to environment texture open up and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and look for my uh hdri that i created that again you guys will have access to Okay, and then really quick, we're going to select our one of our shapes right here and we're going to make this into we're going to make a new material. We're going to call this chrome. We're going to bring the metallic all the way up and the roughness to about 0.1. And on the meantime, we're going to add a quick uh, a quick uh, area light. So add an area light. GZ, bring it up like so and bring this to about maybe like 50. And we're going to select these and lastly select the one shape that already has the material and then control L and we're going to link materials. And so now we have all the material applied to all the other shapes. And uh, you might want to go and unhide these really quick and do the same just so that we have that set up as well. Control L link materials. Okay. So and really quick, we're also going to go ahead and go to film and transparent to have that set up. So as you can see, we have this nice little chrome material going on. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Another thing you want to do really quickly, go to your outline, object data property, and we want to bring the uh, resolution to 11. And over here, we want to bring it to 24. Okay. So that adds a bit more like smoothness on your uh, curve. All right. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and hide this again. I think we could bring this light up a bit more. Right there should be cool. And then again, hide this. So we only have this. So this camera will be so our frame our, our animation will, will end at 200 frames and i want it to be split into two parts so the the first camera will go all the way up to maybe like i would say 75 so i'll add a marker here and a marker at the very beginning that's where it's going to start and so my this camera this front view camera will pop up after frame 75 
So while having my camera selected, I'm gonna go ahead really quick and make a new collection to be organized. And we're gonna call this cameras. And keep in mind, you could do this with multiple cameras. I'm only gonna do two at the moment to keep it so real short, but you could add as many cameras as you want. That way you can have different angles all rendered within one scene, uh, which you could also do individually, individual camera setups, but then you gotta go and render each one individually and then go into After Effects and put them together or Premiere Pro. And I think that's a long way to work, go about it. So if anything, you can just do it this way um, and it'll be quick and easy for you. So uh, put our camera right here. Let's just say that this is going to be camera two. It's going to be camera two. And uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure you have this camera selected. So click on this green icon and control B on your timeline while hovering over, over your timeline. And right there, you have your camera two selected here. So now we're going to go to frame number one. We're going to add another camera really quick. Okay. And this camera, we're going to do camera number one. And make sure that your camera number one has the green icon selected. And while hovering over your timeline, control B. And now, as you can see, after frame one, the camera is going to switch to that first position. So really quick, let's go select our camera number one. Let's select, select the camera number one and move it somewhere to the side like this. And so if we go into camera view and we could move and pan around again, and we want to be somewhere like, I don't know, somewhere around here. This is the view that I want for this first shot right here. Okay. So now that we have these cameras set up, as you can see, they got that going on. Uh, so what I'm going to do is if you guys want, we could start animating really quickly the cameras. So for the camera number one, having it selected, we want to go ahead and click I to insert a keyframe. Uh, and we're going to set that keyframe into the location and rotation. And we're going to bring this to about here. Don't go all the way up to 75 because it's going to switch to the other camera. So now we're going to go ahead and move this to the back a bit more. I'll say somewhere there. We're not even. We're going to move down like, like this. Insert location rotation. Okay. So and then bring this frame to make sure you have this only one frame selected. Move it up to 75 where it ends. So you can see, boom, it's moving. And then it switches back to another camera angle. Um, so uh, now that we have this, we want to go so go ahead and set up this camera right here. And it's going to be right there. Let's zoom in a whole lot more. I want it to be really close in. I think right there should be pretty cool. And go to that last keyframe and then zoom all the way back. So it's somewhere, I would say there. Insert location rotation. So, so you can see, it goes from this one animation right here to the other animation okay all right so let me just take a quick little sip of coffee all right so uh what we're gonna do now is now that we have that animated we have the two cameras animated um what we could do is we could go ahead and start animating the uh, logo. So to do that, I'm going to hide these really quick for now. Let's hide them. And so again, you want to pre-plan how you want to animate your logo. In this case, I've pre-planned so many times already. So I already know that my logo, the COS, could somehow come together. And then the O will just kind of come in from scale zero. So you're not going to see anything and it's just going to pop in and it's going to spin. So this is how I would do that, right? So I want to go to frame 75. This is where the camera is going to rotate or switch to camera number two. And uh, I want to make sure I, I select my first shape, insert location, rotation, go to frame number one. And now what I'm going to do is GX to move this out like so. And we also want to rotate this on the Y axis. So it's going to be negative 360. Um, again, I know it's negative because I've done this already. So I know that that's how it works. And the only reason why I would do that is because uh, one sec. So, so, all right, my fault. I didn't, I didn't insert the keyframe for the, for the location. So I'll move this back again. And uh, on the Y axis, negative 360. And uh, make sure you insert these right here. So as you can see, we have our logo coming in. Boom. And it locks. So it, it literally just locks perfectly right there. Bam. Okay. So we're going to also go ahead and do the same for the S. We're going to go ahead and insert location rotation on that frame 75, which is where it switches to camera number two. Go to frame number one, move it on the, on the X axis to the opposite side and uh, 
do negative 360 on the y axis on the rotation and then make sure these keyframes are selected and now if we move in like so boom it locks in perfectly and then for our circle we're going to insert a keyframe for the location rotation and the scale since i want this to also be scalable we're going to go to frame number one we're going to make this let's not change this yet let's do a 360 right here insert that and then this we're going to go ahead and zero and insert those keyframes and if it plays as you can see boom it connects right there perfectly and this is what i wanted and so if i unhide my cameras again let's unhide camera number one so we can see what we got going on here we get this pretty cool logo animation happening and boom comes in comes in and locks in okay so now that you've done that uh, another cool thing that I like to do for this is let's select our shapes again, right click, interpolation, bezier, um, and we're going to go into graph editor and we're going to make sure we have everything. We have everything selected by clicking on A. So as you see, it selects everything. Uh, we want to go ahead and switch the pivot point to individual centers and we want to scale, the, scale, scale this up. So as you can see your lines, what, what this will do is it'll go and start fast start slow speed up and then and then goes fast again so so slow speeds up and then slow again so as you can see it has a different animation than the s and the o so we're going to do the same thing for the s we're going to select everything interpolation bezier uh and then make sure this is selected it, it is already scale it up like so and let's do quickly the same thing for the o so select the whole thing interpolation bezier and scale it up like so okay so now if we play everything, we got this. And I think it's pretty, pretty cool. Okay. So we're going to watch what's going on on camera. So you can see it's playing. And I think this is pretty cool. I like how it's going. Let's switch back to, to regular uh, view mode. That way we don't have to render Beyond Cycles. It's going to be heavy on my computer. So boom, we got that animated. All right. So now when it switches back to the other camera, my idea is... My idea is to basically have the M and the E pops in as well. So to do that, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to animate them. Now do keep in mind when I have these pop in, the COS, well the full logo, it's not gonna be centered anymore. So what we would have to do is we would have to take the whole thing and move it now fairly to the left. Uh, and to do that, simply what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna want to add a empty and we're gonna do a cube we're gonna go into uh, front view scale this down so that it fits perfectly on the whole thing make sure we unhide hide also our bezier so we can see the actual full logo scale on the x-axis somewhere around there should be pretty cool move on the x-axis as well gx move it to the side a bit scale x a bit more okay go to three so on your on your keyboard so you can move to that side view and scale scale on the y axis somewhere around there should be pretty cool gy and then boom we, we should have our logo now fitting perfectly into this empty it doesn't have to be exact um and so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to select all of our individual uh shapes and we're going to go ahead and select that empty as the last one so it should be yellow and these rest should be orange and then uh we're going to go ahead and control p and then set parent to object and keep transform and so now if we move this empty uh all of our shapes will be moving up with it okay so now when we are on this front camera view right here uh what we could do is we could have this be animated from there to being centered okay so let's actually hide this again so I just wanted to show you, you know, what I'm, what, what I was thinking as I was pretty much putting this animation together. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to animate the, the M and the E really quickly before we do anything else. Okay. So to do that, let's say that we want this to come in at by frame, by frame, let's just say 130. We want everything to be in already. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert location, rotation, insert location, rotation and scale actually. Uh, we're going to go to frame about, let's say, 100. We want to move this up a bit like so. Okay. And we're also going to add a quick 360 on the Z-axis. 
we're going to insert location rotation in the scale. And then we're going to move to frame 75. And we're going to move this so that it's literally right behind our COS. Okay. And then we're also going to go ahead and make it zero. And then insert location rotation and scale. And so now we have something like this. Okay. All right. So the only thing that I am not liking that I didn't do was... I added the 360 rotation at the wrong time. So we're going to get rid of that. So the 360 should be happening from here to here. So we're going to zero and then add a keyframe there. So now it should go like this. Okay. And so now we're going to do the same thing with the E. Uh, so the E should start popping in somewhere around at 100. But I do want it still to come everything in at 130. So insert location rotation. Actually, we're going to move this to, let's say, one, 150. So it could be a little behind. Insert location rotation. Okay. We're going to do, let's say, 120. We're going to move this fairly back. Somewhere around here. Insert location rotation and scale. So right now we have that. And now we're going to go to frame 100. And we're going to move this behind the COS once more. And uh, we're going to add a quick 360 to it. Insert a keyframe. Insert location, rotation, and scale. And now we have that. Okay, so if we go into our camera view, we see this. Boom. And this is pretty much what, I, what I'm looking for. All right, we're pretty much 30 minutes into this animation right now. Which is pretty crazy, but... Um, all right, so another thing I forgot to do was we didn't add we didn't add a keyframe to the zero so we're gonna move this over here on select them and select them again so now we have that i think this is pretty cool okay so now we want to go into our camera view and we want to see when they start popping in so as a matter of fact somewhere around here we want to start moving so we're actually going to start at frame 75. We're going to insert a keyframe on the location, but on the x-axis. And then we're going to move to frame 130. I think it's, no, frame 150 is where, where it ends. And it stops moving. And we're going to make sure that it's centered or centered on our camera view. So somewhere around there, I should say it should be centered. And then insert a keyframe there. And so as you can see, connects, boom, builds up, and is being centered. Okay? So now, one last thing that we have to animate would be our Bezier curve. And to animate that, what we would want to do is, I would say maybe I would want it to start coming in somewhere around here. So select our quick uh, curve. Make sure we have it selected. And go to our object data property. Make sure that it's it's fully not on screen so bring this up add a keyframe there and we want it to already be building up right there okay so we should have something like this boom okay so now all right so we're gonna add a bezier to this and see what that looks like all right cool we're also going to go ahead and add Beziers to this. And as a matter of fact, let's see how this looks if I were to also scale the whole thing. Let's see what that looks like. All right. That looks pretty dramatic. I like it. And then scale this as well. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that. Okay, cool. So, um, what we would want to do now is we pretty much have everything animated. This is pretty much the animation right there. So, so far, I've shown you guys how to animate, um, how to add two different camera shots within your timeline. How to animate shapes individually with the rotation scale and the uh, uh, position or location. I've shown you how to parent, uh, how to parent objects to empties. And I've shown you how to animate curves. And so we've also have some good lighting and chrome material as well. 
that looks pretty cool. So what you could do now moving on forward is you could literally play with the lighting. So you can make some point lights. So if you go to a light and you add a point light, you could put one somewhere here and increase the power to like 500 to make sure that it's being emphasized. And then you can scale up the, the, the radius and move it up somewhere like around here. It has to be somewhere close to the logo, but not in front of it. Okay. And so another quick thing that I want to show you guys that I did on my uh, animation, my first animation I did uh, was you add a quick light and area light RX. Hold on. RX. GY. Bring it back. Scale on the X axis. Make it thin like so. Okay. And bring the power up to like, let's say 500 and make sure that it's pretty close. All right. So the only reason why I'm doing this is because I want to have this nice little glare sweeping through the logo towards the end. So once it's fully animated right there, I would want this animated. So let's move this to the side like so. Let's go to 140, insert location rotation, go towards the end. GX, move it to the side, insert location rotation. And so if we go into our camera, Make sure we have the show overlays turned off. We will have that animated as well. Boom. And believe it or not, you could do this in After Effects as well. That light sweep, you could do it in After Effects. Uh, but if you want to do it all within Blender, you could do that. Also, you could just render it this way. If you were to render this, what you would do is in this occasion, what I would do is bring that max samples down to about 500. You don't need more than that. And the seconds to do about 10 seconds so it don't take no longer than that, than that make sure you have motion blur selected uh for the color management on look i would go to about high contrast it'll give you a bit more of a contrast and uh for the output keep it as png if you don't want to have a background that way you can add whatever color black background you want uh in uh, after effects or premiere pro uh make sure you keep it as a png rgba make sure you have your folder selected and name it and then you literally just click on render and uh you should have all this render and then you could do pretty much any composition color grading whatever you want to do within within premiere pro or after effects um or if you want you could just simply add a quick background here we'll add a background a, a background rx90 gy bring it back pretty back make sure it's fully back scale scale it up by a lot let's say it's scale by 10 somewhere pretty big that no matter if you're on that first camera angle the background will still be showing up on screen or on camera i should say and uh make sure that you make this i'd say to get a more cool cinematic look make this black bring up the metallic up a bit and so another thing that i would do on this case is i would add another area light so i would simply just take this one no actually let's just add another one so we're gonna add an area light rx90 i don't know why it keeps doing that rx90 GY, bring it back. Make sure that it's literally right against the wall for our background. So right there. Bring this up to about maybe like 300. Scale it up a bit. Let's go into render view so we can see what we got going on. And switch it from a square to an ellipse. Okay. So if we go here, we'll have this nice little background glare behind our logo. Almost at all times. So you can see. And I think that's another cool way to add a quick little background and keep in mind that you go ahead and also play around with the uh, color of the light if that's something you want to do. But uh, this is pretty much how to do a quick, cool little cinematic logo animation pops in like so. So if you were to add some nice little dramatic music to this or whatever the case might be, uh, your logo animation will be completed. Well, anyways, after a quick little long animation, uh, we've come to an end. Uh, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you want to find the project file um, and you want to have the same HDRI that I use to get this nice little cool abstract look into your Chrome reflections, it'll be on the description down below, Patreon. It'll also support me into being able to make more of these videos. Um, and uh, make sure to drop a like if you're a new uh uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.